Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So, uh, this is kind of a, a special video that I wanted to record and never really had the time to do so until now. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, we're gonna be talking about NATO in this video. Uh, but before we uh, get to the, the main part of this video, which, yes, I am going to be reading the entire NATO treaty. I mean, there's only... Well, let's see here. There's only 14 articles that we really care about. Because I'm looking at the official treaty, like the actual PDF. There is, like... There's, like, 18 pages, but we only need to pay attention to the first three. So, <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. So yeah, we're gonna read it word for word. I mean, you don't have to listen to it if you don't want to, but... Yeah. Uh, the reason I wanna make this is cause, uh, well, the membership of NATO could potentially change within the next uh, year or two. Uh, we will, before we actually read the actual treaty, we will briefly go over the brief history of it, and kind of explain, kind of in the briefest generalization as I can, of what NATO is, what's it for, and uh, I will briefly go through who is currently a member of NATO. And I know all of you have heard about NATO, especially for, well, quite a long while, I would assume, because this uh, organization has been around since uh, 1949, so it's quite old. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, we're going to cut away and we're going to briefly go over a brief history of NATO. Alright, so we're going to attempt to briefly uh, talk about NATO as in like what it is, what it's for, and what its main purpose is for, you know, all of its members. Uh, I will try to put it down in the most simplest terms that I can, so just bear with me on this, because, uh, yeah, I may have to eventually, uh, try this little part again, because I can, as you can tell, we're doing, like, little, like, segments. Okay, so, basically, it's a military alliance that, as of right now, composes of 28 European countries and two North American countries. I think you can tell which two North American countries are in it. Because in fact, that flag and this flag are both in NATO. Not this one. Or this one. But we'll get to those later. So basically, the West decided, you know, after World War II, like, hey, we should probably have a military alliance since the US and the Soviet Union are now in some form of a Cold War. And so they did. It was originally 12 countries. And when the Soviet Union saw that, they're like, hmm, we should probably make one response. And so they did, and they created the Warsaw Pact. Uh, we may kind of talk about it in brief generalization on this channel, maybe, I don't know. But in case if you're wondering what the Warsaw Pact flag looks like, it looks like this. Alright, so now we're going to kind of briefly talk about all the times that NATO was expanded. And, you know, talk about all of its members. So, TRANSITION! Alright, so NATO has expanded since, the f since it was first ever created nine times, with a possible ten coming soon. 
but we'll get to that here in a bit. So, it was obviously started in August of 1949 with 12 members. And they are in alphabetical order. I'm not going to throw the flags on there, so you can... You pretty much know what most of these uh, country flags look like. Anyways, in alphabetical order, we have Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the UK, and the US. I was about to say America, but you guys already know what the US is, so... Obviously. Okay, so the first time it got expanded upon was February of 1952 with two new members for Greece and Turkey. And then, about 30 years later, May of 1982, we get a new member, which bumps it up to 15. Spain joins. And October of 1990, you know, obviously Germany reunifies from east to west. And officially fully joins NATO as, you know, it's full unified self, you know, from east and west. In March of 1999, three new countries were added, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Poland. Okay, in March of 2004, we have seven new members, which I believe is the most at one time that we had new members join, other than the very you know, from the very beginning. But anyways, they are Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, and Slovenia. And April 1st of 2009, we get two more. We have Albania and Croatia. In June of 2017, we have one, which is Montenegro. And the most recent time that NATO was expanded, which was March 27th of 2020, yeah, during the pandemic, is North Macedonia. So we are currently at 30 members. Now, I did say that NATO was is potentially going to be expanded upon within maybe a year or two well because there is currently two ratification processes for two countries of Europe that are currently being ratified to join NATO uh, in order for a country to join NATO uh, all the members they have to put in like an application and then all the legislators of the current members has to agree, I, I would assume at least two thirds in agreement that that country can join, you know, NATO. So right now the two countries that are potentially trying to join NATO are Finland and Sweden. And how many countries have ratified them to join NATO? All but two of them. They have the two countries that still need to ratify them are Hungary and Turkey. Hungary is supposed to do it sometime this month, in January of 2023, when this is being recorded. Uh, side note, this video was originally recorded for November of 2022, but I scrapped it and decided to re-record it. 
So, sometime this month, Hungary is supposed to vote on whether or not to to include Finland and Sweden into NATO. Uh, whenever that happens, I will uh, update my uh, Google Doc with all my NATO stuff, and uh, soon it'll be just Turkey. Uh, there are also uh, three countries that do want to join, but it's currently up to NATO whether or not if that's going to potentially happen. Uh, we have Bosnia and Herzegovina that want to join in 2008, and by the way, Her Bosnia and Herzegovina is all one country, but the way how it's split up and governed is weird. Uh, in 2011, we have Georgia, not the U.S. state of Georgia, the country of Georgia. This is what their flag looks like. And obviously, in September of 2022, Ukraine. So, yeah, there's that to uh, deal with. Alright, so now with all the background stuff of NATO already taken care of, and all the current members, who is trying to join, and maybe future potential members are, it's time for the main highlight of the video. Reading this godforsaken treaty. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna mention this right here right now that it is very, very long. You don't have to listen to it if you don't want to, but I feel like it's important to know and understand it. So let's go to the next transition. Actually reading the treaty. Alright, it's time to start reading the treaty. <laughs> Again, I apologize for this being kind of long, but uh, this is the main uh, point in the video, so uh, please bear with me on this. I will read it article by article, and I will split them up. So, yeah, we're just gonna do that. The North Atlantic Treaty. 1949 Washington DC April 4th 1949 the parties of this treaty reaffirm their faith in the purposes and principles of the Charter of the United Nations and their desire to live in peace with all peoples and all governments they are determined to safeguard the freedom common heritage and civilization of their peoples Founded on the principles of democracy, individual liberty, and the rule of law. They seek to, pr to promote stability and well-being in the North Atlantic area. They are resolved to unite their efforts for collective defense and for the preservation of peace and security. They therefore agree to this North Atlantic Treaty. Let me get a little comfortable here. <laughs> All right, Article One. The parties undertake, as set forth in the Charter of the United Nations, to settle any international dispute in which they may be involved by peaceful means in such a manner that internal peace and security and justice are not endangered and to refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force in any manner inconsistent with the purposes of the United Nations. Article 2. The parties will contribute for, toward the further development of peaceful and friendly international relations by strengthening their free institutions by bringing about a better understanding of the principles upon which these institutions are founded and by promoting conditions of stability and well-being. They will seek to eliminate conflict in their international 
economic policies and will encourage economic collaboration between any or all of them. Article 3. In order more effectively to achieve the, objection, the objectives of this treaty, the parties, separately and jointly, by means of continuous and effective self-help and mutual aid, will maintain and develop their individual and collective capacity to resist armed attack. Article 4. The parties will consult together whenever, in the opinion of any of them, the territorial integrity, political independence, or security of any of the parties is threatened. Article 5. This is the main article of this whole entire treaty. The parties agree that an armed attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all, and consequently, they agree that, if such an armed attack occurs, each of them an exercise of the right of individual or collective self-defense, recognized by Article 51 of the Charter of the United Nations, will assist the party or parties so attacked by taking forth forthwith, individually, and in concert with the other parties, such action as it deems necessary, including the use of armed force to restore and maintain the security of the North Atlantic area. Any such armed attack and all measures taken as a result thereof shall immediately be reported to the Security Council. Such measures shall be terminated when the Security Council has taken the measures necessary to restore and maintain international peace and security. So basically, if someone attacks any member of NATO, that means all of NATO was attacked. So for example, if Russia attacks I don't know, let's say Poland, then that's a war against all of NATO against Russia, just as a hypothetical. Article 6. For the purpose of Article 5, an armed attack on one or more of the parties is deemed to include an armed attack on the territory of any of the parties in Europe or North America, on the Algerian departments of France, on the territory of or on the islands under jurisdiction of any of the parties in the North Atlantic area, nor for the Tropic of Cancer, on the forces, vessels, or aircraft of any of the parties when in or over these territories or any other area of, in Europe in which occupation forces of any of the parties were stationed on the date when the treaty entered into force or the Mediterranean Sea or the North Atlantic area north of the Tropic of Cancer. Article 7. This treaty does not affect and shall not be interpreted as affecting in any way the rights and obligations under the Charter of the Parties which are members of the United Nations, or the, primarily, the primary responsibility of the Security Council for the maintenance of international peace and security. Article 8. Each party declares that none of the international engagements now in force between it and any other of the parties or any third state is in conflict with the provisions of this treaty and undertakes not to enter it into any international engagement in conflict with this treaty. <sighs> That's almost like a mouthful. Article 9. The parties hereby establish a consul
on which each of them shall be represented to consider matters concerning the implementation of this treaty. The council shall be so organized as to be able to meet promptly at any time. The council shall set up such subsidiary bodies as may be necessary. In particular, it shall establish immediately a defense committee which shall recommend measures for information of Articles 3 and 5. Like how I said before, Article 5 is the ultimate one. It's, it's the main article in the whole entire treaty. Article 10. The parties may, by unanimous agreement, invite any other European state in a position to further the principles of this treaty and to contribute to the security of the North Atlantic area. To accede to this treaty. Any state so invited may become a party to the treaty by depositing its instrument of, of accession with the government of the United States of America. The government of the United States of America will inform each of the parties of the deposit of such instrument of accession. So I guess what that basically means is that we're in charge to tell all the other members hey so and so is going to join and uh, we need you to bring all your votes to us so we can send them to you know headquarters that's my interpretation I could be wrong with that but that's what I'm getting out of it article 11 the treaty shall be ratified and its provisions carried out by the parties in accordance with their respective constitutional pr processes. The instruments of ratification shall be deposited as soon as possible with the government of the United States of America, which will notify all the other sign signatories of each deposit. The treaty shall enter into force between the states which have ratified it as soon as it, the ratifications of the majority of the signatories, including the ratifications of Belgium, Canada, France, Luxembourg, Netherlands, the UK, and the United States, have been deposited and shall come into effect with respect to other states on the date of the deposit of their ratifications. Article 12, this is the last page by the way. After the treaty has been in force for 10 years or at any time thereafter, the parties shall, if any of them so request, consult together for the purpose of renewing, of reviewing the treaty, having regard for the factors then affecting peace and security in the North Atlantic area including the development of universal as well as regional arrangements under the Charter of the United Nations for the maintenance of international peace and security. Yeah, I don't know why my eyes just started watering. I don't know all that. I apologize, everybody. Article 13. After the treaty has been enforced for 20 years, any party may cease to be a party one year after its notice of deunication has been given to the government of the United States of America, which will inform the governments of the other parties of the deposit of each notice of deunification. I can't even pronounce that word, so I'm just attempting, I'm just butchering it at this point. And finally, Article 14, the treaty of which the English and French texts are equally authentic shall be deposited to the archives of the government of the United States of America. Duly certified copies will be transmitted by that government to the governments of other signatories. So 
So there you have it. That's what the treaty is. And yeah. And now for the conclusion, as we go into one more transition. All right. So that is all the time we have for today. Uh, if Finland and Sweden officially join NATO, I will make a video of it and I will, you know, just, you know, it'll be a video that I will make. Hopefully it won't be too terribly soon, but, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. So that's all I have for today. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you. That's right, you watching in the next video. Bye-bye!